Maxillary Lateral Incisor. Welcome to our video on the anatomy of the maxillary lateral incisor, a tooth that complements the maxillary central incisor in both form and function. These two teeth bear such a striking resemblance that they are often mistaken for one another. The maxillary lateral incisor exhibits distinct characteristics when compared to the central incisor, despite their similar appearance. In terms of size, the lateral incisor is generally smaller in all dimensions, except when considering root length. The key feature to differentiate the two is the proportion of the crown to root length. The central incisor has nearly a 1 to 1 or 1 to 1.1 crown root ratio whereas the lateral incisor has a 1 to 1.5 crown to root ratio. However, the dissimilarities become apparent when we examine their developmental aspects which can exhibit significant variations. Let us first discuss the chronology. The first evidence of calcification occurs between the ages of 10 to 12 months. Over several years, the tooth continues to develop, with enamel completion taking place around 4 to 5 years of age. Eruption generally happens between 8 to 9 years. Finally, the root completes its development by the age of 11 years. Let's now talk about the morphological features that define the maxillary lateral incisor. Starting with the labial aspect of the crown morphology. First, notice the outlines. The cervical line is semicircular, with the curvature towards the root surface. The mesial end of the cervical line is straight until the junction of the middle and incisal third, which represents the mesial crest of curvature or the contact area. Then it continues to a mesioincisal angle, which is more rounded as that seen in the central incisor. From here, the incisal outline is relatively straight and it ends at a more rounded distoincisal angle. It then continues as a curved or semicircular outline on the distal side with maximum convexity at the middle of the middle third, after which the outline is relatively straight to end at the distal end of the cervical line. Key points to remember from the outline are the following, which are side identification feature for the tooth. The distoincisal angle is more rounded than the mesioincisal angle. The mesial crest of curvature is at the junction of incisal and middle third while the distal crest of curvature is located more cervical at the middle of the middle third. Having learnt the labial outline, let us also learn the labial surface characteristics. Walking on the labial surface would be like walking on a hillock. Like the central incisor, it shows convexity at the cervical third, representing the labial crest of curvature the outlines of which will be better seen from the mesial or distal aspect. From the cervical prominence to the incisal edge, it is a relatively flat surface, but slightly more convex than that seen in the maxillary central incisor. Now let's turn the tooth to view from the lingual aspect. The outlines would be the mirror images of that seen from the labial aspect. Remember how we viewed the lingual aspect to like going around a lake in the video of maxillary central incisor? The idea is the same here, but with a few differences. The small hill present at the cervical third or the cingulum is more pronounced in the lateral incisor as compared to the central incisor. Even the other three mountains such as the mesial and distal marginal ridges and the linguo-incisal ridge 
are more prominent. This makes the central depression or the lingual fossa more concave. This fossa is more of a V shape as opposed to the one in central incisor which was M shaped. Also note that there may also be a presence of a crack or deep development groove on the distal side of the cingulum that extends to the root. This is known as the palatoradicular groove, characteristic to maxillary incisors. This groove harbors harmful bacteria and makes it difficult to clean. So remember, the presence of palatoradicular groove predispose the maxillary lateral incisor to development of caries as well as localized periodontal diseases. Next, the view from the mesial aspect. Let us trace the outline first. Focus on the cervical line. It is curved toward the tooth surface. Let's start from the labial most part of the cervical line. We see that the labial outline shows a convexity which is maximum in the middle of the cervical third, representing the labial crest of curvature. After this small curve, the line goes relatively straight, but more rounded than that seen in the central incisor to end at the incisal ridge. It is important to note that the incisal ridge is in the midline and aligned with that of the root apex, or maybe slightly labially placed, but never lingually placed like the central incisor. After the curved outline of the incisal ridge, the tooth outline follows a concavo-convex path lingually. The concavity from the incisal third extends till the junction of the cervical and middle third and represents the lingual fossa and the convexity represents the cingulum. The maximum crest of curvature of the cingulum is seen at the middle of the cervical third. Whereas when viewed from the distal aspect, the crown shows a similar outline as that of the mesial aspect. Though some differences to note are that the crown appears thicker and the curvature of the cervical line is at a lesser extent than the mesial aspect. The palatoradicular groove that originates from the distal side of the cingulum usually extends to the distal side of the crown and continues to the root portion. These features help in identifying the mesial and distal sides of the tooth. Lastly, let us also view the tooth from the incisal aspect. Trace the outline from this aspect. The mesial outline and distal outlines are represented by the mesial crest of curvature located at the junction of incisal and middle third and the distal crest of curvature located at the middle of the middle third. The labial and the lingual outlines are represented by the crests of curvatures present at the cervical third, both labially and lingually. Both the labial and lingual outlines appear more convex than that seen in the central incisor. Moving on to the root morphology. Generally, the maxillary lateral incisor exhibits a relatively longer root compared to its crown length, making the root roughly 1.5 times the length of the crown. When viewed from the labial or lingual aspect, the root follows a gradual taper from the cervical line towards its apical end, extending approximately two-thirds of its length. In most instances, the root sharply curves in the distal direction, terminating in a pointed apex. The root is narrower lingually than labially. When viewed from the mesial aspect, the root of the maxillary lateral incisor takes on the appearance of a tapered cone, typically ending with a rounded tip. In many instances, the labial outline of the root appears straight, similar to the central incisor. A line drawn through the center of the root often divides the incisor ridge of the crown into equal halves. 
whereas from the distal aspect, there may be the presence of the extension of the palatoraticular groove. Let's now have a look at a clinical case. Case 1. Can you spot the unusual character in the dental arch? It's the tooth that might catch your eye for looking a bit peculiar, almost resembling a peg we use to secure a tent. This tooth takes its place where the maxillary lateral incisor should be, but it doesn't conform to the usual norms. What you're observing is a developmental anomaly known as a peg-shaped lateral incisor. Peg-shaped maxillary lateral incisors are a form of localized microdontia that affects the shape of permanent maxillary lateral incisors. They are conical in shape and broadest cervically and the proximal surfaces taper toward the incisal to a blunt point. It may also be observed as a developmental anomaly caused due to congenital syphilis. Case 2. Now let's direct our attention to another image. Can you spot the maxillary lateral incisor? It is missing. Upon examination using a radiograph of the corresponding area, there's a complete lack of any evidence of this tooth. What we are observing here is a case of maxillary lateral incisor agenesis or congenitally missing lateral incisor. It is the most common congenitally missing permanent tooth condition, representing approximately 20% of all dental anomalies. Bilateral missing lateral incisors are more common than unilateral cases. That was a lot of information. Before we wind up, let us also discuss the pulp morphology. The maxillary lateral incisor possesses a single root, housing a single canal. Its pulp chamber closely resembles that of the central incisor, although it differs in the incisal outline, which is somewhat more rounded. Within, the root canal has a smaller dimension and typically appears rounded or oval in cross-section. Toward the apex, the canal tends to curve in a palatal direction. Remember this. The lateral incisor is a smaller cousin of the central incisor, which supplements the cutting action of the anterior teeth. It has higher tendencies to be smaller or may be absent or malformed too. The variations in the root canal morphology make it unique and require care to be taken for treatment purposes. Thanks for watching. We hope you had fun learning with us.